Hi, welcome to this series of case studies. We are going to have a look at different case studies of varying difficulty levels. This will give you an idea of how the approach should be when you sit down to do an analysis on a data set. Some of you may have a different approach and we are more than glad to know more about them. The data set that we are going to discuss first is data about Titanic. We all know the legendary RMS Titanic was the largest passenger ship of the time when it left Southampton, England for New York on the 10th of April, 1912. As fate would have it, she hit an iceberg on the 14th of April and eventually sank within hours, taking down with her most of the passengers on board. The data that we have here is a part of the complete data set and it contains the name, sex and age of about 891 people. Some other information available are if they were traveling with a sibling, spouse, parent, or child, and details about the tickets, class of travel, fare, and where they boarded from. A vital piece of information included in this data set is whether they survived or not. A final goal using this data set would be to build a model that would be able to predict the survivors as accurately as we can in a similar but separate data set. Would you have survived the shipwreck? The first step would be to clean and prepare the data. If you take a look at the data set, we can clearly see the missing values in the age column. Now, age being an important factor, these missing values need to be taken care of. The most obvious method would be to remove the blanks, but that would also remove the corresponding rows and reduce the data considerably. As you can see, we are losing out on 170 odd rows by filtering out the blanks. Another approach could be to fill the blanks up using the average age. But then again, this would not be too accurate. So what information from the data set can we use to fill the missing values more accurately? I would suggest you pause the video for a couple of minutes and try it yourself. If we look at the names column, we can see it is arranged in the surname in the beginning, followed by the salutation and then the first name. Now the salutations, Mr., Mrs., Miss, Master, etc., quite clearly denote people of different age groups. Hence what we can do is use the average age of each salutation to fill the missing values, if any, of the corresponding salutation. This can be done by extracting the salutations out from the names into a separate column using simple Excel functions. The function mid is what I have used here. If you're going to use something else, do let us know what it is in our discussions forum. Once the salutations are extracted, take out the unique values and put them in another column. Now for each salutation, use the function average if and find out the average ages under each salutation. The next step would be to take the missing values in the age column 
and replace them with the average values of the corresponding salutations. This can be done using a combination of if, index, and match. Hope you guys are having fun. But the fun part actually begins now. If you have noticed, for each person on board, there is a column called PARCH, which denotes if that particular person was traveling with a parent or a child. And if yes, then how many? But there are no details to suggest who was traveling with a parent and who with a child. What if we want to find out if traveling with the child affected the survival of the parent, or even the other way around? So we want to find out how many males were traveling with the mother on board. In other words, how many mother and sons were there on board the Titanic? How can we find this out from the information given? Shut everything else off and think about this. Take a look at your data set and try to find out a logic that would satisfy the condition of a mother-son relationship. The first thing that needs to be done is sort the data. Copy the whole data set somewhere else and sort it by gender. Once that is done, sort it by the names. The mother and the son would have the same surname. So what we can do next is extract the surnames from the names column to another column. This can be done using the functions left and find. So now all the people of the same surname are clubbed together. The next condition to be satisfied is that there needs to be one male and one female of the same surname. Finally, the age difference between both of them should be 18 or higher where the female is the older one. That's what we have assumed. Since there are multiple sons, the conditions need to be checked in a loop. For example, there might be one mother and three sons. But using function in Excel, this condition cannot be taken into account. To do this, we need to head over to VBA. Assuming a family is not larger than 10 people, we can run a loop where the conditions provided will be checked one by one in the loop. The conditions are that there needs to be one male. After this, a female with the same surname needs to be found in the next 10 observations. If found, we need to check if the female is elder to the male by 18 years or more. This is an assumption that we have to make. All of this can be done using a combination of a simple if and and function within a loop using for. This will give you all the sons that are traveling with their mothers on the dataset. You can also try other combinations like father, son, mother, daughter, or father, daughter. However, the same age difference logic cannot be used to separate the siblings from the spouses. If there's any other logic that you think we can use to do the above, please let us know in the discussion forum or send us a mail. So what we have done here is, we have taken a loop to check for all the conditions from the second to the 900th row. That includes the whole data set. We have assigned cells r, 8, r being a variable, to x. And we have assigned r plus n, 8, r and n both being variables to y. Here n is from 1 to 10. So when n is 1, the cell would be r plus 1, 8. That means 
it's going to be the next cell. Similarly, when n becomes 2, it'll leave one cell after r and go to the next cell. You can see what the conditions given are. When x is equal to y, that means when the surnames are the same, and when the first cell says male, and the corresponding cell says female, and the difference between the cell that says female and the cell that says male is greater than or equal to 18, then it will say that the male has a mother. <clears throat> Let's check if a logic was correct. So here it says that Ford he has a mother. So he's male, he's 16 years of age, and there's a female with the same surname who is 48 years of age. So the age difference between them is greater than 18 years. So we can say that a logic has worked. Let's take another example. Here, Alison has a mother. He is male and is less than a year old. There is also a female with the same surname who is 25 years of age. The age difference between them is greater than 18 years. So we can safely say that the logic still stands. Now let's get to the final question. What we have to do here is build a model based on the given data which can help us predict the number of survivors if we are given another data set with the same variables. We can also split our present data set into a training and a test validation data set to test our model on. There are a total of 11 variables or columns. Let's head over to R to build our model. The packages that we are going to use are MAS, CAR, and ROCR. Since the response variable here is whether the person in question survived or not, it is a binary variable. Hence, we will be doing logistic regression. The first step would be to import the data set into R. This can be done using read.csv. The next step would be to fit a generalized linear model using the function glm. From the summary we can see that P class or the passenger class of travel, the sex male, age, and sib sp, which is the number of siblings or spouse on board, are the most significant variables. The next step is where we build a model using the predict function. Then, we plot a prediction. We use the jitter function to display the plot better. At this point, we split the dataset 6040 to create a training dataset and a validation dataset. The set.seed function is used so that we get the same result each time. The number 1, 2, 3, 4 has no significance whatsoever. Here, we assign 60% of the data to training data 
and 40% to validation data. Training data now has 534 observations. And the validation data has 357 observations. Now we build a multiple regression model using the step AIC function. What this does is drop the less significant variables and keep the significant ones. We can see that variables are gradually being dropped. Okay, so now we are left with only the intercept, the sex male, age, and the number of siblings or spouse on board. These are the most significant variables chosen by the step AIC. Now we predict on the training and validation files using the predict function. The par function is used to combine two plots into one to make it easier to compare. Now we build something called a confusion matrix. Here we can see how many times a model can predict the ones and the zeros correctly on the validation data set compared to a training data set. We assign a cutoff value of about 0.4. This can be changed according to our needs to check the performance of the model. As we can see, the model on the training data set can predict the zero 286 out of a total of 336 times, whereas it can predict the one 139 times out of a total of 198. In comparison, in the validation data set, the model can predict the zero 185 times out of 213 and the ones 94 times out of a total of 144. That's a pretty decent model. This brings us to the end of the first case study. Hope you liked it. Write to us if you have any queries in the discussion forum or you could also mail us to the given email ID.